My name is Gabriel Reyes, and I graduated with a degree in neuroscience and education from Teachers College. My family suffered financial hardships all throughout my life. I went to 13 schools before college in high school. I had joined a program called Upward Bound, which was, it's a federal program that helps first-gen low-income students. I have this privilege of taking courses at the university, but there was still so many like reservations that I had regarding whether or not people like me belong at these institutions. But my best friend thought differently. She was very much like, you are going to apply and I'm not taking no for an answer. I honestly do not think that I would have been at Brown or Columbia or as a Gates Scholar had it not been for my best friend, Swan. As soon as I turned in my last final, my sophomore spring, I got on a plane, went to Taiwan, where I did a two month a psych internship at a company doing autism research. And then I did a month in Spain where I had worked in a hospital in the neurology department. And then afterwards I hopped on a plane and I got to Denmark where I was a visiting medical student. My struggles in, in undergrad, I thought were my fault. Like I'm not studying hard enough or I'm just not born smart enough. So it's, I need to change. I hadn't come in with the like cognitive skills or the academic studying sort of mentality that some of my peers were able to cultivate in high school. And I think I was able to sort of illuminate that when I was in Denmark because I wasn't struggling. I was doing really well in my neuroscience courses and I was actually doing well enough where professors actually wanted to talk with me because they were very interested in what was motivating me to become a neuroscientist. As a queer Mexican, there's not a lot of us out there and like in the STEM field in general especially if we come from like low-income first-gen backgrounds. That really motivated research questions that I was asking at Browns to really start exploring the intersection between poverty and learning. I had to read a lot of Kim Noble's work on socioeconomic status. I think for me that was the first time that I had actually seen a neuroscientist asking questions about poverty. When I matriculated to TC, I was also fortunate to get an offer from Daphna Shohami, who runs the learning lab at Zuckerman Institute. But at the same time, I was spending some mornings at a middle school near Harlem through the Zanko Fellowship. So I was exposed to two different communities of adolescents. So the interest in poverty, I think, came from a, a gap that I had identified in the literature where we just weren't asking these questions in um, an eclectic group of, of communities. I think we were asking it in a really siloed space. My thesis project exploring how poverty affects our ability to learn from reinforcement and how this affects memory. I wanted to know what were factors that were distracting people's ability to optimally attain information and memorize that information that they were able to use in the future. I'm very thankful for the faculty at Teachers College, to Karen Frau, to, to Kim Noble, to Tyler Watts, who were very supportive of my interests and how my background motivated those interests. That starting in the fall of 2021, I will be able to continue my research at Stanford University on a Knight Hennessy Scholarship. To really be a much better computational scientist, but also better at designing experiments that actually get to the root of the questions that I'm asking.